Welcome to creating a Google Sheet timeline. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to open up your Google account and your Google Drive. So you can log into your Gmail and from that, from your Gmail page or from a Google page, if you click on this button right here, you can see which account you're logged into. And I am logged into the right account. And so now I want to show you how to open a new document. So you're going to go to this little grid button right here. And you're going to click on that and then you're going to click on drive. Now you are in your own Google Drive that's linked to your Google account. And you can tell that you're in your own drive by looking at this button right here. You can also click on this button and it will show you everything that other people have shared with you from their drives. So the first thing we want to do is open a new document. So we're going to click new and then we're going to click Google Sheets. And this button right here, this box right here is where we can type the title. And if you'll notice, it says working. That means it's saving the document as we're working. So we want to name this and we're going to call it timeline for Thomas Stoke. And then as simple as that, the document is open and named. So we're, I'm actually going to work off of a different document that I've already started because it has a few things in there for me already. So the first thing we want to do is create a title. So we're going to merge our first five lines here. And we're left clicking and dragging across row one. And then this button right here is our merge button. And we want to merge all. So we're going to merge all those cells. And then to type in a cell, you're going to double click. And we want to call this the timeline for Thomas Stokes. And he was born in 1809. And he died at an early age in 1847. Thomas Stokes is my husband's fourth great grandfather. Okay, so now we want to center our title. So we're going to come to our alignment buttons and this is the center button. We want to make that a little bit bigger. So this is our sizing button to size our font. So we can click down. Let's make this title 18. And then we want to uh, add our column titles. And so it's a timeline, so we always want a date. It's, we want to document the event that we're covering for that date. And relationships are always important. And then we want to make sure that we document what source we got this information from. And then we want to make conclusions. And we may have notes. So these are the column titles for our timeline. And we may want to do, uh, adjust the column title. So we'll come up here into this bar, the column title bar. And we may want to, we could probably make the date just a little smaller. We're going to want more room for relationships. We're going to definitely want more room for sources and definitely more room for notes and conclusions. And notice how the title was being centered as we moved those column titles over. And let's go ahead and make our headings just a little bit bigger. So we're going to left click and drag over row two. And we'll go ahead and make those 14. Let's see, we'll make those 12. Now we'll make those 14. Okay, so we've got a good start on our timeline now. Now we need to bring in information. So I have some information over here that I already have ready to go. And I'm just going to copy that and I've highlighted it. So let's do both of those rows. And you could come over here to edit and you could use your buttons there, or you can use your keyboard shortcuts, which on a Mac are, whoop, which 
on a Mac are Command C for copy or on a PC Control C for copy. And then I'm going to bring that over. I'm going to line this cell up with where I want the other information to end up with. Whoops, we want it right here. And we are going to use our shortcut for paste, which is Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC. So this information is in a linear format, format right now, so we want to wrap the text. And so we're going to go up to this button right here, the Wrap Text button. And we're going to click on that, and we can wrap that text. If we ever wanted it back, we would click this button and put it back. For the most part, we want to keep wrap text when we're doing genealogy sheets. Okay, so if you're typing in, you want to add information to a cell, you can click in the cell and just start typing. If there's something in there already, your information will be overridden unless you double click. So you want to double click. You'll see something's already there. We don't want to start typing it. We'll get rid of it, so we're going to double click. And then we can add information to that cell. Sometimes we want to add multiple lines to a cell. And if we are in here and we, let's just say we want to add another line here and we hit return, it takes us to the cell below. So what we want to do is we want to find a spot where we're going to add information and we are going to use this shortcut, which is command, uh, Option Command Return on a Mac or Alt Return on a PC. And we're just going to hit Return there with our Option Command buttons. And we now have two lines within that cell. That's a really important feature to know. Okay, so let's move along with our timeline. I'd like to add some borders to our timeline. So I'm going to start in the top left and just click and drag as far as I want to go for the timeline. And then I'm going to click the border button. And I'm going to choose borders around everything. So now our timeline's looking really good. Sometimes we may want to align the text within the cell. These are all left justified. And so that's these buttons right here are your alignment. Let me just show you how, let's just say we want to center the dates. So we're going to click on the, highlight them, click on the alignment button, and then center. If we wanted to center something within the cell itself, we would click this button right here, the vertical alignment. And right now it's centered, but we could make it go at the top, or we could make it go to the bottom of the square. Whatever, whatever suits you. So for this timeline, we're going to make a key. So I'm going to show you how to make use colors. Well, first of all, let's add our a color to our title. So we're just going to highlight what we want and go to the fill colors. And let's just make that top one gray. And then for our key, let's do vital records in pink. Let's do census records in blue. Let's do land records in green. And I like to use the lighter colors because I feel like the chart's easier to read that way. And let's do court documents in, in yellow. That's all I have for this timeline so far. But if I were to find military records for Thomas, let's say, I could always add military and make them purple or some other thing like that. So then these are both vital events, so I'm going to highlight them with a left click and a drag, and I'm going to make, whoop, and I'm going to make them pink. And our timeline is looking really good. There's two buttons that I would like to make sure you understand, and that's the insert button. So if you wanted to insert a row on any of your spreadsheets, you would do row above, row below, or the column. If you want to delete, you're going to go to the Edit button, and whichever, let me highlight a square for, or a cell first, if, whichever button you want to go to, it will give you the option Delete Row 6 or Delete Column D, so I'm in 6D right here, and it will allow me to choose whether I want to erase the whole column or the whole thing, the whole column or the whole row, sorry. The Edit button also has your Copy, Cut, and Paste. Then I want to show you a finished timeline. So here this timeline is finished. It, it is still a work in progress, but I have added colors to the whole thing. 
So we have our vital records. Here's a census record that shows John Stokes' household, and this is the tick mark that we think is Thomas. He um, was born in 1800 to 1810, and he's there in Christian County, Kentucky at this point. Uh, his father's land grant when he was a boy, some more census records. Thomas's land grant and his marriage as he grew older. So you can just add all these things to your timeline, and it really helps you have a good sense of what's happening in your subject's lives. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I wish you the best of luck as you use your Excel tables to track and organize your research.